Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslo here, and today we're going to be overclocking this MSI 1070 graphics card for mining Ethereum. So let me just put you guys down right here so you can see what I'm seeing on the display. And let's get started. So the first thing I always do is, of course, open up MSI Afterburner and then I set the fan speed to 80%. I apply that and that's the only thing I change. Then I'm going to open up my miner, which I'm using T-Rex miner today. Right, and while that settles in, I'm going to talk to you about the three things you need to keep in mind when it comes to overclocking. So number one is overclocking is done at your own risk you know we're doing things to these cards that aren't supposed to be done to these cards and they could fail they could break that is a risk we're taking here it's up to you how far you want to push it the second thing is that the numbers that i get here might not work for you even if you have the exact same version of the exact same card there is individuality between these cards and numbers that work for me might not work for you. So overclocking is always trial and error in that way. Now, the third and last thing is the way I overclock is I try to optimize for just getting the highest stable hash rate that I can get. I don't try to optimize for efficiency. So it might be different for you. You might wanna optimize for hash rate per watt. That's up to you. All right, so it seems that we've settled in at around 26.04 mega hash a second. So what I'm going to do now and what I always do first is I'm just going to slam the memory clock right down all the way and apply that. I just want to see what happens. And yeah, I can immediately see that we're starting to lose hash rate doing that. So I'm just going to put that back to zero, apply that and let it settle back to the 26.04 mega hash a second we were getting. All right, and we're back at around 26 mega hash a second. So I'm just gonna do this exact same thing for the core clock now. So I'm gonna pull that all the way down to negative 400 and just see what happens. All right, and I can tell we're already starting to lose hash power. So I'm gonna put that back to zero, apply that, and then just let it settle back again at 26. 0405 ish mega hash. All right, so we are basically back to 26 mega hash a second again. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start increasing our memory clock. So, I'm gonna put 250 to start, apply that, and let's just see what happens. Okay, so that didn't do very much of anything. I am gonna try to go even further. So, let's do 500. But if we're getting nothing again, I'm going to move on to core clock instead. Yeah, so we're still hovering at around just above 26 mega hash a second. So I'm just going to leave our memory clock there for now. And I'm going to move on to our core clock instead. So I'm going to start by doing quite a big jump to plus 100. And we'll see what happens from that. All right, so we seem to have settled in at 27.26 mega hash a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start increasing it by smaller increments now. So I'm going to go to 125 on our core clock, apply that and we'll see where that settles in at. All right. So it seems that we've settled at around 27.64 mega hash a second. So I'm going to do another jump to 150, apply that and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it seems that we've settled at 27.85 mega hash a second. So I'm gonna push the core clock further to 175 and we'll see what happens. All right, so we seem to have settled at 28.23 mega hash a second. So I'm going to push it another 25 to plus 200 on the core clock. Apply that and we'll see what happens. All right, so we seem to have settled at around 28.5 mega hash a second. So I'm gonna push it another 25 to 225. So that's plus 225 on the core clock and let's see what happens. All right, so it seems we've settled at 28.6 mega hash a second. So I'm gonna push it another 
25. So that's plus 250 on the core clock. And let's see what happens. All right, so we've settled at 29.04 mega hash a second. So I'm gonna push it another 25. So we're going plus 275 on the core clock now. Oh, and we immediately had a crash. So I'm going to put that back to plus 225 on the core clock, apply that, and let's see what happens. So what I do is I do jumps of 25, and then once I get a crash, I dial it back by 50. And that's for a core clock. So right now I'm just gonna wait for it to settle back at the hash rate we were getting before the crash, and then let's move on. All right, so it seems to have settled in at 29.07 mega hash a second. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to revisit the memory clock. So we sort of just left that at plus 500. So let's, let's give that 700. And let's just see if that changes anything now that we've um, messed with our core clock or if the memory clock still doesn't have much of any effect. Nope, that doesn't seem to have had much of any effect. We're still at 29.06 mega hash a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce it instead. So let's go, I don't know, 400. And let's see if that changes anything. So we were at 500, we increased it to 700, nothing happened. So now let's reduce it to 400 and let's see if anything happens then. All right, so the memory clock doesn't seem to do much of anything. We're gonna start messing with the power limit instead. So on the wall, we're at around 155 watts. And let's start moving down our power limit and see what happens. So we're doing 90% first. Now, something I also just noticed was that we just had a invalid share. So that's something I'm going to keep an eye on. And if we get another invalid share, what I might do is I might dial down the core clock another 25. But as for our power limit, it doesn't seem to have affected our hash rate at all. So I'm going to push it another 10%, so down to 80%, and let's see what happens. We're down to around 141, 142 watts on the wall. Let's see what that means in mega hash right now. All right, it seems we've lost a little bit of hash power here. We're down to around 28.18, and I just saw another invalid share as well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to increase our power limit a little bit, back up to 85%, and I'm gonna lower our core clock to 200. And I'm gonna apply those settings, and I'm gonna just let this run for a bit and just keep an eye on it but that should be all good with these settings now so i think i'm going to end the video there guys hey so i was just editing this video and i realized i forgot to mention that of course after you've overclocked your um, card and you're happy with your settings what you should always do is you know just let it run on those settings for you know a day uh, two days a week and just look for you know is it getting the odd rejected share here and there is it crashing and then adjust your settings down as applicable to that and also do you have a version of this card if so please leave your overclocking settings down in the comments and we could sort of build up a little database of you know uh, overclock settings so that's it now back to the rest of the video so thank you so much for watching if you wouldn't mind giving the video one of these i'd highly appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel because i've got a lot more mining content coming up but until then i'll see you in the next video goodbye bye bye